Luxury automotive brands are embracing electric drivetrains for good reasons. They're quiet, smooth, and powerful, attributes that premium cars should have. Lexus is finally on board with this concept. The RZ450e is its first pure battery electric vehicle. The SUV crossover design is what sells these days. Lexus is giving buyers what they want. Size-wise, this slots in between the RX and the NX, inside and out. The RZ and the Toyota BZ4X share an architecture. This should surprise no one. Their wheelbases are the same, but the Lexus is nearly five inches longer and almost two inches wider. As tested, this one is $63,400 and is not eligible for the federal tax credit. It's a loaded premium model with the technology package, radiant knee heat panels, RZ has no glove box, a digital rear view mirror, and the optional 20-inch wheels instead of 18s. Pro tip, for some $2,500 more, step up to the luxury model that replaces the new Lux synthetic seating with grippy ultra suede and adds the possibility of photochromatic glass to the standard panel glass roof. Remember kids, choosing the larger wheels drops the estimated range from 220 miles to 196. That's with a liquid-cooled 71.4 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion pack, 63.4 usable, which is positioned in the floor where you'd expect. RZ450e is strictly dual-motor all-wheel drive, at least for now. Like the BZ4X, there's no frunk. The 150-kilowatt front motor and 80-kilowatt rear unit combine for 308 horsepower. That's compared to 214 for the BZ4X. RZ's estimated total torque is 320 pound-feet. Fire it up. And there's a small screen with graphics that'll be familiar to the Lexus faithful. This is a single-speed transmission. The selector is simple and sure. Recuperation drag can be added or subtracted using these. There are drive modes. Sport burns up the pack fastest. Range does everything to conserve the battery, including turning off the climate control. I drove in normal and eco. A large clear head-up display is part of the technology package, and the customizable menu can be selected with this touchpad. I find it's easy to brush while cornering, calling up the selections more times than I would like. The RZ is more powerful than the BZ4X, but this is not the fastest EV you can buy. Lexus says zero to 60 happens in five seconds flat. The reality is this is plenty of power for everyday driving. It really is. And if you haven't experienced an electric vehicle before, the instant torque makes them feel faster than they are. That's the case here. RZ's main competitors are Audi Q4 e-tron, Cadillac Lyric, Genesis GV60, and GV70 Electrified, Jaguar I-Pace, remember that one? And of course, the Tesla Model Y. With recuperation all the way off, this thing will coast like your best Hot Wheel. Dial it all the way in, and there is definitely more drag, but you do need to use your foot to make this come to a complete stop. Not sure if that'll change in the future with the software update, but for now, that's the way it is. While this is an SUV, I don't see many owners off-roading it. For a number of reasons, RZ is better as a city vehicle. Ground clearance is decent at 7.9 inches. There's the slightly raised ride height that comes with the form factor. Heavy batteries in the floor means a lower center of gravity. So bend this into a corner hard and it takes it just fine. Just remember, this is a Lexus, so the suspension is set towards comforts. That's on point for the brand, come on. Hit big pavement cracks, and those will somewhat work their way into your backside. Don't forget this is wearing lower profile tires on the larger wheels, so there's less isolation from the nasty stuff. 450E is Lexus hushed. At highway speed, all that's really heard is wind off the side view mirrors, and in sport mode, a faint performance sound. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised that Lexus hasn't done an EV before because it really works with the mission of the brand. It's powerful, it's quiet, everything you'd expect a Lexus to be. 
Also expected is the Lexus suite of ADAS technology. The list is long. I had no chance to test the automatic emergency braking. That's a good thing. The adaptive cruise and lane keeping worked well during a 90 mile drive in the rain. Move to the luxury model for traffic jam assist. As far as range goes, Cadillac Lyric all-wheel drive is estimated at 307 miles, Genesis GV60, 248, iPACE, 246, Tesla Model Y long range, 330, with 20-inch rubber, RZ450E brings up the rear at 196. I did not see that number. In somewhat of a torture test, I drove this mostly highway miles in the rain at a temperature of around uh, 50, 55, and I saw 150 miles of range. Mm. Stick with the 18 inch wheels for 20 more miles of travel. One option for the Lexus faithful, both the RX and NX can be had as plug-in hybrids if you want an electrified Lexus for easy long distance traveling. I did a second range test with little to no rain, temperatures in the low 50s, 40 miles of city driving, all in eco mode, and saw 165 miles, if you're wondering. In the future, Lexus plans on offering a yoke in the RZ. Now, Tesla simply bolted on a weird looking steering wheel, Lexus is using steer-by-wire technology, so you'll never steer more than 90 degrees. Ever driven a yoke and do hand over hand? It's really awkward. Not sure when it's gonna be available. I've talked to other automotive writers that have used it. They say it's compelling, but takes some time to get used to. The shorter range of the RZ450e isn't helped by its DC fast charging speed. The max take rate is 150 kilowatts, so Cadillac, Genesis, and Tesla have the edge there. A fully spent pack can juice from 80% in 30 minutes in ideal conditions. It's why I feel the city is the RZ's natural habitat. Lexus seems to be well aware of this shortcoming and offers 30 days of free Lexus car rental over the span of three years, you know, in case you want a road trip and don't want to deal with stuff like this. Now, I have to point out that if you can charge at home and you don't road trip often, then charging speed and range don't matter as much. Know your needs. Its onboard charger is rated at 6.6 .6 kilowatts, lower than its competitors. Using 240 volt 32 amp home level two, it charges overnight, takes around nine and a half hours. Effectively, this is much like the others in class if you typically aim for a full night's sleep, which is really good for you. The ambiance of the RZ450e is clean and simple, formal yet casual. If you or women in your life shop at Eileen Fisher, you'll recognize the vibe that Lexus designers were going for. The gauge cluster positioning is more traditional than the setup in the BZ4X. The leather wheel is heated, so are the chairs, vented too. There's a projected pattern on the door cards, but none of the rich LED ambient lighting found in Cadillac, Genesis, or Mercedes vehicles. There are the usual places to stash things away. The console makes it easy for both driver and passenger to get into. Uh, there is no glove box, but this space makes up for that. And now you know what I had for lunch on shoot day. The releases are linked to sensors and doors won't open if the system detects vehicles or cyclists approaching. It can be overridden by pulling outward. If you haven't heard about the new Lexus user interface, it's a huge improvement over the old wonky trackpad. It largely uses natural voice prompts. Let's give it a navigation challenge. You use the phrase, hey Lexus. What do you want to do? Is there any good Baba Ganoush around? I found 15 results. The first is Sinbad Express at Fremont Place North. Would you like to go to that one? Yes, sure. That's actually pretty impressive. Now, not everybody wants to talk to their car, but it really does keep your eyes on the road. You don't have to look for buttons or anything. Um, one thing, this does rely on a data plan and it's free for a year. After that, it's a subscription. 
Lots of physical controls for those refusing to chat up Hell 9000's girlfriend. The Cheapad does a good job of charging my iPhone. And there's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, along with digital key technology. The sound system is okay. Audio files spring for the luxury model to get the Mark Levinson upgrade. Here's a question for you. Is the back seat the same size as the BZ4X? It's actually a little roomier. Really? Huh. It's a Lexus. It should be more comfortable. Headroom, up by a couple inches. Same with legroom. Footroom is good. Thigh support is good. Door openings are big enough so that car seats go in and out. No sweat. Drilling into the details, door pockets are kind of small. There are no built-in sunshades. Pockets on both seat backs. The kids won't fight over those. No separate climate zone back here, but you can charge your phones here and down here. Move up to the fancy model for heated seats back here. Not available on this one. The glass roof makes it very airy back here. I like this a lot. The floor is super flat, and the bench is like four inches wider than the BZ4X. So three average sized adults will be comfortable back here, even when taking longer trips across town. My opinion on the RZ450E styling? It's crisp, clean, and purposeful, arguably the best looking sport ute that Lexus makes. No walk-up lighting drama like the Lyric, but the kick in the shoulders is a nice visual. This might be a solid panel, but visibility is good. Happy to see the Lexus designers painted the quarter panels, unlike the BZ4X. And here's a concept, normal door handles. Being an EV, it doesn't need a grill. So the RZ has a spindle schnoz. I get it, the shape defines the Lexus brand. Like many of its vehicles, the rump has no logo, no wiper either, and no pretending that the airflow from the spoiler clears the back glass because uh, there is no spoiler, just these. Uh, not sure if they're structurally sound enough to use as tie downs for lashing kayaks to the roof. Like the BZ4X, the more successfully named RZ450E does not have a frunk. All the cargo space is back here. Any bets on storage under the load floor? Yeah, that's a decent amount. Certainly enough room for the supplied dual voltage charge cord. The ET and G architecture does not support vehicle to load transfer like the Genesis eGMP platform. These are good for holding uh, something. No remote seat back releases. You might expect that on a Lexus. Not too bad of a reach for an average sized guy. Petite owners will want to walk around to the back doors to avoid bumper schmutz. There's no 40-20-40 split or ski pass-through, demerits for that. Maxed out, there's up to 55 cubic feet behind the first row. With them up, it's nearly 24 cubes, same as the GV60. Lyric and Model Y offer more cargo room. But seven packs of softness and absorbency is a decent score for a vehicle this size. I like this feature. Lock the RZ up this way and it'll wait to close until you're clear of the tailgate. I cannot tell you how many times I've had that thing come crashing down on me. Time for red light, green light. Green light. The RZ450E is powerful and quiet, as a Lexus should be. I find the clean, balanced design to be a win. Comfortable but controlled driving dynamics are exactly what this brand stands for, and the user interface keeps getting better, especially compared to the loathsome trackpad. Yellow lights. Full functionality of that interface means paying for a data plan. There are high quality materials in the cabin. In black, it feels a bit austere. The RZ is quick, uh, but don't go racing competitors for pink slips, okay? You all know what that means, right? Red lights. Not only is the estimated range low, I didn't come close to the figure in my two tests. That combined with a 150 kilowatt max charge rate means those 30 days of car rental will come in handy for road trips. Made in Japan, it does not qualify for any federal tax credits. Check with your state. Okay, that last one really isn't the fault of Lexus, but by dragging its feet on electric vehicles, Toyota and Lexus are far behind other manufacturers like Volvo, Polestar, Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis. Those import brands are well on their way to completing U.S. factories that will build massive amounts of EVs. And Volkswagen already building the ID.4 in Chattanooga. I like the design of the RZ. It's quiet. 
It's comfortable, it's a useful SUV, and electrification works really well for Lexus. With that said, this is a Lexus, and it should be held to a higher standard. The charging speed should be faster. The range should be longer. Even though this is a new vehicle, it's playing catch up right out of the gate. The RZ450E will be perfect for Lexus loyalists that don't intend to travel cross country on a regular basis. Others will only see the shortcomings. As always, pay attention to your needs and the competition. I'm lucky enough to have lived with nearly every EV available in the US and can honestly say for people who don't take long trips on a regular basis and can charge at home, anything more than 200 miles of range means you're just paying for a battery that's not needed. But I will also hammer home that EVs are not for everyone, especially people that live in apartments and condos without access to overnight charging. So yeah, a plug-in hybrid version of the RX or NX might be a better electrified Lexus choice for some. Those are easy to charge on standard 120 volt electricity since the gas engine always has your back. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Rob Calero for doing driving duties this week. Um, Martin is at a wedding, his daughter's wedding. Yes. We're all very happy for him. Send money for Martin <laughs> because he's gonna need it. Uh... The YouTube super thanks and Venmo donations that you send along are appreciated. This is what I do for a living. Like NPR, we need your support. We have expenses like gas, commercial charging, insurance, and camera gear. YouTube advertising alone doesn't pay the bills. Wish it did. Before I go, I think we all know that Toyota has dragged its feet when it comes to building pure electric vehicles. It loves to use the term electrified, but doesn't make very many BEVs. It has famously said that it can lower its carbon footprint by building a lot more hybrids and plug-in hybrids using the same battery material as one EV. Things might be changing. It seems like Koji Sato, the new CEO of Toyota, is embracing EVs, and the reason might be China, because that is such a huge market, and it is going headfirst into electric vehicles. Toyota has recently teamed up with BYD to build the BZ3, a smaller electric uh, sedan. And uh, we'll see how things go there and whether or not it affects EVs here in the United States. It's one of the reasons why I like this industry. There's so much drama and things change on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on social media, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.